There's no question bullying is shameful behaviour that claims too many young Australian lives. What's terrifying is the tormentors no longer leave their taunts in the schoolyard. Technology and social media let bullies follow their victims home. For parents, the dilemma is how to protect their children. Last month, Mark Bladen decided to confront the teenager he thought was bullying his daughter. But what started as heated words became an ugly and violent scuffle. The outrage that followed, though, was not what you might expect. Do you want to have a fucking go? Do you want to have a fucking go? Come on. It's the video that struck a deep parental nerve. I just wanted to give him a good old-fashioned talking to after I warned him to stop, stop smiling and there was no change. That's when I snapped. A Brisbane father confronting the bully he believed was his daughter's tormentor and losing control. Fucking help me! I'm not proud of it. I, I was suckered in. I let my standards drop and, you know, Dr Jekyll came out. Mark Bladen had spent months feeling powerless to help his daughter until one day he decided he couldn't stand by and watch it any longer. We live in a day of PC, political correctness, and I hate it. I absolutely hate it. You know, when I was young, you treated a lady like a lady and it should be the same way now. So it's not hard to have respect for somebody I'm a great believer in karma. You give respect, you get respect back. Two weeks later, do you get it? The snarl's slow, coming back to the bar. <laughs> that was yeah. a terrible joke. <laughs> One bully quickly turned into many. They insulted me about my body hair, that I should shave, called me names like Gorilla and King Kong and everything like that. So it was intensely personal. Yeah. For six months, Mark Bladen's 15-year-old daughter, Kalani, endured the nastiest of comments. You kept it from your parents. I told them when he would, like, bully me at school. I only told them that part, and they don't really know what he said online, because I just, I didn't know how to tell them. Even to this day? I don't want to put, like, all the pressure on them and, like, have them, like, stressing out, because they already stress out a lot with like school and like work and everything. I would go into a room and have a look at tissues everywhere and I was wondering why she had tissues. But Kalani's mother, Jennifer, was worried. Most evenings as she and Mark watched television, Kalani remained in her room. As a parent, you don't know what's happening in their room. You don't want to even go into their room thinking they need their privacy, but under that roof, the privacy is not their privacy, it's the whole world is there looking at them and telling them what they can and can't do and judging people. In the schoolyard and out socially, the bullying continued. Kalani was pushed, she says, and spat on. And with each new attack, Jennifer and Mark's anger grew. And every time Kalani got bullied, um, ev the whole family takes it on board. Frustration just builds up and then the anger and um, until I suppose one day you snap. You felt a bystander in, in your own child's destruction. Yeah, yeah. Then one afternoon, a distraught Kalani called Mark. She was crying, she was upset. I basically said, where is he? And uh, she said, is, it, is at the skate park? And I said, right, that's it, I'm gonna talk to him. And uh, she said, no, don't, you know, don't do anything about it. But I was adamant because it had just been going on for so long and... What did you think you were going to say to him? I knew straight away that I was gonna give him a good old fashioned talking to. So I, I walked down there with, with purpose, with an aggressive kind of uh, demeanor. Uh, spotted the group. Um, and the point you were wanting to make was what? I wanted to belittle him in front of his friends the, the same way as he always did with Kalani. So once you had you'd said all you wanted to say, yep. your intention was to leave, was it? Yeah, I was very, very close to leaving. 
And then? And then he smiled at me. What are you doing? Oi! Fucking get off! Get off him! And you found yourself lunging at this yep. young person. You couldn't stop yourself? The metre had uh, gone past maximum, so th that's when I snapped. Next thing I knew, my hands were around his neck. When you walked away, what were you thinking? Uh, job done. How do you view what Mark did? I know what he did was really bad, but nothing resolves in a fight. Did you become the bully? Um, did I become the bully? I don't know if I would call it being the bully. It was kind of a, a one-off incident and I regretted it straight away. I wouldn't say that I was a bully. I, I would say that I was out of order. Police arrived that weekend and charged Mark with assault. But when video of the brawl went viral, in the court of public opinion, Mark was hailed a hero. When people claimed your husband was heroic in his actions, what did you think? Um, he did what I think any parent would do, but... A lot of parents would disagree. Maybe I'll rephrase that. He, looking back, what he did was not right. His in initial intention was to go down there and speak to him. And you were OK with that? I was OK with that, yes. But you thought that was fair? I think so. I don't like to see my daughter sad and crying and telling me that she's useless, she can't do anything. Well, has the bullying stopped? Yes, it has stopped. For many parents, Mark's actions have pierced the heart of a complex and difficult issue. Reaction has been overwhelmingly sympathetic, including from Mark's mates at the local darts club. I have two daughters myself. Um, sometimes you have to take matters into your own hands. So when Mark exploded and he went to talk to the bully, you understand that? I definitely understand that. Um, and I would hope that he would do it again, to be honest. You don't condone it, but by the same fact, he's got to stand up for his family. His family comes first, too. The frustration of what to do about childhood bullying never leaves Quentin Pearson. You see your child getting bullied and is hurting, you want to protect them. For the past two years, Quentin has been in a world of pain. Ever since his 14-year-old son Cody took his own life after being bullied, Quentin is now a parent tortured by what he wished he could have done and what he still can't understand. I just don't feel I was there for him. and. Yeah, I question myself why he couldn't, why he couldn't have come and talked to me about it. And, you know, I didn't think a 14-year-old could think like that. It's to Mum, Dad and Taylor. For Cody's parents, Michelle and Quentin and his sister Taylor, his death would have left them struggling for answers, if not for this letter. If he hadn't left us a letter, we would have, there would have been a thousand unanswered questions. And in his letter, he did leave one very important sentence, which is what keeps us going for him. What, what is that sentence? Um, he wanted everybody to know how bad bullying is. That letter, it's devastating yet important, I guess, Quentin. Yeah, if it's very important life. We, didn't have it, we wouldn't know why, what he was thinking, and we'd be a bit lost. So we've got something to work for and try and help other people. As parents, how do you feel about what's happened? Angry. Mm. Who are you angry at? Angry at those kids. I've seen those messages. You were angry at the bullies? Yes. Mm. 
You view it as cowardly. Yeah, yeah. I do. It makes me... I'm, I get really angry and upset, but, <clears throat> you know, it's real easy to sit behind a keyboard and, you know, type whatever you want and be gutless. Born and raised to Kiwi parents on the outskirts of Brisbane, Cody seemed to have it all. A handsome, sports-loving schoolboy who had plenty of friends. From what I've seen on his social media, some of the stuff was just about liking a girl. One person who did know about the bullying was Cody's older sister, Taylor. She was his only confidant. Did you talk to mum and dad? No, but I did tell Cody to, and um, he would always go to, but could never get there. He didn't want them to see him as yeah. unable to cope. Yeah, because, you know, as a parent, if you see a kid not coping, you're gonna freak out, and that's what neither of us wanted. And do you think that's common for kids to worry about how their parents will react? Yes. And the reasonings why Cody's message has been set up. The Pearsons have set up a foundation called Cody's Message. It got to the point where Cody absolutely hated school. And Taylor takes that message to schools. Put your hand in the air if you have ever been bullied. So as parents who've seen the very worst of bullying, what do you want to happen? There needs to be some consequences like everything else in life. There's a consequence, you know, and, and at, at this stage there's not for bullies. So they can just carry on and do it to the next child and the mm. next child and the next child. Coming up... I'll be grabbing you when no one's around. I just look like some lowlifer. What happens when Mark faces court? Do you have any regrets? I wish I could take it back, but... And how should Australia deal with bullying? I mean, there needs to be repercussions to have a real deterrent effect. That's next on 60 Minutes. Fucking watch your back. I'll be grabbing you when no one's around. When the nation saw this video of Brisbane father Mark Bladen confronting the boy he believed was bullying his daughter, it struck a chord with parents across Australia and drew attention to the new world of bullying so many families are trying to understand. Just how serious is online bullying of children? Well, online bullying of children is very serious, and we know here in Australia that one in five young Australians are cyberbullied. One in five? 19%. Julie Inman-Grant deals with the problem every day. So we just had someone from our inquiries line. As Australia's e-safety commissioner, she's been tasked with the job of making the internet a safer place, including stopping online bullying. Is it true that a significant number of those who do bully tell their victims to go kill themselves? 30% of the reports that have come into our office include direct threats of harm targeted at a child. Hello, cyberbullying team. The eSafety Office acts as a liaison between Australians bullied online and big social media companies like Facebook and Instagram. Just ask them how they're feeling, if they've had anyone, if they've spoken to anyone about it, a trusted adult, for instance. And there is a helpline where victims can report bullying anonymously if necessary. In the three years since it was created, the Commission has resolved more than 700 cases. In your opinion, as the eSafety Commissioner, do the laws need to be tougher? We're not going to arrest our way out of cyberbullying, and that's why the prevention and education is so important. We had a situation where a father took matters into his own hands and paid a price for that. But you can appreciate parents will do all the right things uh, and find it still doesn't stop. What do they do? I mean, I can abs absolutely empathise with them as, as a mother of three children myself. Um, it's perplexing and it's scary and it's uncharted territory for a lot of us. So what would you do? Well, what I would say is that we all have responsibility 
to get ahead of cyberbullying and to address it as we see that. So it's, it's not just the parents. Schools have a duty of care. Um, even young people themselves, we know that 50% of young people won't even talk to an adult, let alone report to a social media site when they're encountering this. Is it time, from your perspective, you see this, you see what happens online, is it time for the bullies to realise there are consequences? Yeah, I, I think I know these are children. <laughs> I know this is tough. I know it's complex. But have we reached a point where bullies need to know there is a consequence? Yeah, I mean, there needs to be repercussions to have a real deterrent effect. You know, my question would be whether or not um, criminal penalties, except for the most egregious cases, are warranted. And I think you have to look at each case on a case-by-case -case basis. More than ever, bullying is proving to be terrifying. A nightmarish hell where parents are left feeling frustrated and powerless. What makes you wince most? I just look like some lowlifer. Um, and yeah, it just doesn't look like me. Fucking help me! If I could go back in time, I wouldn't have been in that situation to start with, but... You wouldn't have even gone there? No, no. It was a stupid thing to do. Stupid thing. Mark Bladen was fined $1,000 in Brisbane's Magistrates Court and offered a written apology to his 14-year-old victim. The boy he attacked says he continues to be deeply distressed, adding that he suffers nightmares and that he himself has been bullied. Do you have any regrets? Yeah, look, I, I regret my actions. Um, um, I was baited. And uh, unfortunately, I let my standards lower for that moment in time. And uh, I wish I could take it back, but I just, yeah. And to those parents who feel that frustration that you felt? Yep. You would say? Don't do it, you know. Um, do the right thing. If this story raises issues and you need help, you can contact Kids Helpline on 1800 55 1800. The Federal Government's eSafety Commission Helpline can be accessed at www.esafety.gov.au.